Let's talk about the Trinity. Early Christians had a wide variety of beliefs. Some groups, such as the Ebionites, believed that Jesus was completely mortal and not at all divine. They believed that to consider him God would have been idolatry. Then you had groups on the opposite end of the spectrum, such as the Marcionites, who believed that Jesus was completely God and absolutely not human. According to Marcion, who was the first compiler of a Christian canon based upon the letters of Paul, there was a God who created the world and gave the Torah to the Jewish people. However, he was an angry God, and the God Jesus had to come and overwhelm this angry God. According to Marcion, the God of the Hebrew Scriptures and the Christian God are two completely separate gods. Then you had groups like the Gnostics. The Gnostics were polytheists who considered Jesus as just one pantheon of gods. There were many different Christian sects, and, and each of them viewed Jesus in different ways. This path of many very different beliefs within Christendom continued well into the days of Constantine, who was the emperor of Rome. Around the year 311-312, he converted to Christianity after having a dream about the cross, leading him to a military victory. When he won that victory, he converted to Christianity, and after his conversion, Constantine made Christianity a legal religion, which it wasn't until that time. But as the years passed by, Constantine realized that his kingdom was greatly divided. With so many different factions of Christianity, he realized that his kingdom was greatly splintered, and he wanted to create a unified kingdom because the more a kingdom is ideologically split, the less unity there is and the less success of that kingdom continuing. So in the year 325, Constantine invited 1,800 bishops from around the Christian world and invited them to come to what he called the Council of Nicaea. The 300 bishops who arrived sat around and tackled the nature of Jesus. By that point in time, everybody had already agreed that Jesus is divine. The question was, is how is he divine? Is he as divinely great as God the Father? Was he of the same substance as the Father? Was he eternal? Or did he have a beginning and did he have an end? What was the nature of his godship? For two months, these bishops raged back and forth, tearing each other apart. And ultimately, Constantine ended up making the final ruling that Jesus is on the same level as God the Father. Now, previous to this time, there were thinkers who wanted to push the concept of a trinity because Christianity had glued itself to the Jewish Bible, which says very specifically that God is one. So they had to come up with some kind of way to justify the worship of Jesus, as well as the worship of a God who is unable to be seen. So you did have thinkers like Tertullian and Origen who tried to come up with ways of defining this divine three, but each of their beliefs were very, very different from one another. And ultimately, Tertullian's belief and Origen's belief about a divine three were rejected. Even then, after Jesus was decided at the Council of Nicaea to be on the same rank as God the Father, it would still take time before the Holy Spirit was ranked right up there, and the doctrine of the Trinity was officially accepted as the leading dogma of the Church, and that would happen at the Council of Constantinople in 381 CE. There are many Christians who will point to the New Testament and say, but the doctrine of the Trinity is found in the New Testament itself. The Trinity is never explicitly mentioned inside of the New Testament. Now, there is one mention that all scholars across the board agree was a later addition. That is in 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Everybody agrees that the last segment that refers to a trinity was a later addition and was not included in the earliest Greek manuscripts. Ultimately, the trinity was a later invention of the church, and it is something that the church holds very strongly to nowadays. What's very interesting is that messianics who identify as being like first century Christians will hold on to the Trinitarian beliefs, even though those came into being well after the first century. Now, what's super important to note is that the Trinity can be found absolutely nowhere in the Hebrew Scriptures. We'll talk about this more in the upcoming video, in which I'm going to examine missionary claims about, about finding the Trinity inside of the Hebrew Scriptures. So look forward to that one.